This is the LG V60. No, I'm not gonna call it the LG V60, thank you, 5G dual screen, we're not doing that, but Here's the thing, this is a 5G phone for under $1,000 with a Snapdragon 865 and everything you could ask for. It's a pretty great deal, especially when you compare it to the $1,400 Galaxy S20 Ultra. Let's start off with what's good about this phone. The V60's hardware is gorgeous. It looks almost exactly like a Galaxy S10 from the back with this elongated camera housing, but it has a flatter design that sort of abruptly tapers instead of rounding off. I really like this classy blue finish with gold accents on the metal rails, and there's also a white model that looks equally nice. The thing's built like a tank, and it's got all sorts of hardware amenities. It's IP68 water resistant, it's got quick charge 4 and wireless charging, you get a fantastic set of stereo speakers, and look at that, there's still a headphone jack, it isn't totally dead yet, and of course you get LG's incredible quad DAC for high res wired audio. This 6.8 inch display up front is totally flat, and while it's limited to just 1080p, I think it looks really great. It's color accurate, it's bright enough for outdoor visibility. My only two complaints with it are the big bezels around the perimeter and the 60 hertz refresh rate. Seriously, 90 and 120 hertz panels have been pretty common for over a year now, so 60 feels like a pretty noticeable downgrade, but if you're coming from a phone that already has a 60 hertz display, and you probably are, this really isn't that big a deal. Now, if there's one huge headline victory for the V60, it's definitely the battery life. LG crammed a 5,000 mAh battery inside, and paired with the 1080p display and super efficient processor, endurance on the V60 is unreal. It's been basically impossible to kill in one day, and we were only able to reach 30% after 5 hours of screen on time and an hour long group duo call. So yeah, the phone's big and heavy, but it all pays off with some of the best battery life we've seen on any phone in recent history. Now about the cameras, LG went pretty basic this year with just two cameras and no dedicated telephoto in a time when zoom is a pretty major focus. You get a 64 megapixel primary sensor with 4 to 1 pixel binning for 16 megapixel output along with a 13 megapixel ultra wide. There is technically a third Z camera, but that's just LG's fancy name for its advanced time of flight sensor. There's really nothing too crazy going on with either camera, but I actually really like that. In my S20 Ultra video, I knocked Samsung's image processing for its over sharpening, softening on faces, lifted shadows, and so on. None of that is a problem on the V60's camera, everything just looks natural and as it should. And to no one's surprise, the ultra wide is also pretty great. LG's been doing wide angle lenses for longer than just about anyone, and there's no harsh barrel distortion that you'd typically see in this format. The trade-off is that photos from either camera, while balanced in color and exposure, are pretty lacking in fine detail, especially once you zoom in even just a little bit. And speaking of zoom, 2x is about the max you should push with the V60 because anything above that quickly turns your photos into oil paintings. It's the V60's biggest weakness against the S20 series which put a big priority on telephoto. But honestly, I'd take a good wide angle over a telephoto any day of the week if I had to choose, so this isn't a big deal to me, but your priorities may be different. We should also talk about what's not so great with the V60 because boy that software is not great. You do get Android 10 which is nice, but even though LG's software has been visually redesigned for a cleaner look, it's still clunky as hell. The app drawer still doesn't stay sorted when you add or remove apps, and there's no gesture to pull down the notification shade. Like, at all. There's also a ton of bloatware on this AT&T unit I've been reviewing, with over 30 apps pre-installed from Candy Crush to CNN and DC Universe, it's just insane. And LG doesn't plan on selling an unlocked variant in the states, so this is the only option you're gonna get. Those carriers will also determine the price you pay for the V60. T-Mobile's listing it at just $800, which is two-thirds the price of the S20 Ultra for a pretty comparable phone. Meanwhile, AT&T and Verizon are selling it for $900 and $950 respectively, but for that extra money, you're at least getting the dual screen attachment, which I didn't mention before because it's really the same thing we saw on the G8X. It's a little half-baked, and the software management isn't the greatest, but you do get twice as much screen when you want it, which can really come in handy. 
Look, the V60 has its quirks and compromises, but none of them are enough to be deal breakers. Software is entirely subjective, and most of what I don't like about the software can be fixed with a third-party launcher, even if it means sacrificing the full-screen gestures and going back to three-button navigation. I rarely take zoom photos for the quality difference to matter that much to me, and I really do like the regular photos that come out of these two cameras. And again, there's just nothing like the V60's battery life, and for that alone, I'd say you should go out and buy it. This isn't a better phone than the Galaxy S20 Plus or S20 Ultra, but for hundreds of dollars less, it sort of doesn't have to be. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and go check out our full thoughts on the V60 over at androidcentral.com. Until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you around.